Jury trial delayed for years old sex assault case in Sheboygan County Court. One injured in Saturday rollover crash. National Weather Service confirms tornado touchdown near Cascade. These stories and more coming up on Community News Review. This is Community News Review, service WSCS TV, news content provided by WHBL. Hello, I'm Maddie Fister, and welcome to Community News Review for Wednesday, September 5th, 2018. The National Weather Service confirms two more tornado touchdowns in Wisconsin from last Tuesday's storms. One of those touchdowns was an EF-1 tornado in Cascade with winds of 100 miles per hour. That tornado touched down at 4.36 p.m. on Tuesday, August 28th, staying on the ground for just over five miles. Andy Boxell with the National Weather Service says this was likely a different tornado than the one that was seen near Kohler Andre State Park. Boxell says that this line of storms, many small tornadoes formed, touched down briefly and lifted back up. The tornado that touched down in the town of Wilson was an EF-0 that touched down at 457 and was on the ground for three-tenths of a mile. A total of 19 tornadoes touched down in Wisconsin that day. A jury trial was scheduled to begin Tuesday morning in Sheboygan County Court for a man accused of touching a 13-year-old girl in his bedroom in the village of Glambula over 14 years ago. When jurors arrived for the beginning of the four-day trial Tuesday morning, they learned that the trial had been adjourned. Burke Tons Thompson is facing a felony charge of second-degree sexual assault of a child. Court documents say the teenage girl had been lured into Thompson's bedroom to look at pictures of her when she was a child. When she got to the room, she said Thompson started kissing her and tried putting his hands down her pants. He was stopped when another person in the house called for her help with the household chores. She said she did not report the incident sooner because she believed she brought this on herself and was very embarrassed that it happened. Thompson is facing up to 10 years in prison if he is found guilty, and a status conference has been set for Friday before Judge Kent Hoffman. A Madison toddler is safe after being found in a bathtub with the child's dead mother. The woman's grandparents found the pair around 10.30 Sunday night. The child was cold but appeared to be okay. The death of the 25-year-old woman as a suspected overdose. Police say the woman was a known heroin user. No names have yet been released. A Reedsburg father and mother are facing possible charges after their 15-year-old son died during a 40-day fast. The teen's father, 49-year-old Kihinde S. Omasabi, reported his son's death to police Sunday afternoon. He said the teen, identified as IFA Omasabi, died on Friday. An autopsy was conducted Monday at the State Crime Lab in Madison. The findings have not yet been released, and officers visited the home and found the boy not breathing and extremely emaciated. Another 11-year-old and his mother were also found extremely emaciated but alive. The child was taken to Reedsburg Medical Center and then transferred to Children's Hospital in Madison. The child will be placed in protective custody, and the mother refused medical treatment for religious reasons. The father identified himself as a religious minister affiliated with Cornerstone Reformation Ministries. 
He said that the family started their fast on July 19th, and a police report said there was no food in the family's apartment. One man got a ticket after a rollover crash in Sheboygan County, town of Linden, Saturday night. The Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department got a call around 1030 and responded to County Road F near Blueberry, Blueberry Lane, where they found a 2016 Hyundai CRV in the ditch. Deputies say 61-year-old James Jenick of River Hills was westbound on F, crossed the center line, and went into the ditch on the opposite side of the road. He managed to cross Blueberry Lane. Then his vehicle slammed into a pile of rocks near a driveway. The vehicle was tipped onto the driver's side, trapping the driver. He was extricated, refused medical treatment, but did get a ticket for driving inattentively. And finally, cyclists across Sheboygan County and Midwest are gearing up for the 19th annual Maywood Earth Ride on September 15th. The ride is the largest fundraiser for Elwood H. May Environmental Park, with proceeds from the event supporting Maywood's environmental education programs and projects. This year's ride features the 112-mile Iron Raccoon route, option for cyclists seeking a special challenge, and a 12-mile family route for younger participants. The ride will also offer 25, 50, 70, and 100-mile routes. The longer routes feature hills of the Kettle Moraine. The ride begins and ends at Maywood. The Maywood Earth Ride is designed to be a family-friendly event with distances for all ages and abilities, including in the ride fee are rest stops with snacks and sport beverages. Fun stops for the family route, SAG and maintenance support, goodie bags, a full color map and cue sheet, and continental breakfast. After the ride, participants enjoy lunch and activities. To encourage family participation, a special 12-mile family route rate has been offered. Two adults and up to two children, 12 and under, can participate in the 12-mile ride for a special rate. And the ride was established in 2000 as a fundraiser for the Ecology Center expansion at Maywood. Since then, has continued to attract cyclists from as far away as China. In the event's history, more than 10,000 participants have netted over $133,000 in support of Maywood. Those interested in riding may register via mail until September 13th or in person at Maywood Ecology Center weekdays, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., and Saturdays on 1 to 4 p.m. Check-in and walk-in registration will be available on Friday, September 14th from 3 to 6 p.m. or the morning of the ride beginning at 6.30 a.m. Start times for the routes are 7 a.m. for the 112-mile route, 7.30 for the 170-mile routes, 9 a.m. for the 50 and 25-mile routes, and 10.30 a.m. for the 12-mile route. All cyclists are required to wear a helmet. For more information, please visit gomaywood.org or call the Maywood Ecology Center at 920-459-3906. And that is our report for this week. Join me again next time for another recap of our local news on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.